Welcome to Section 5, Using the PuppetDB. The PuppetDB is a fairly new feature and allows configurations, manifests, and other goodies in the database as opposed to storing all this stuff on files on the Puppet Master. By the end of this section, you will know how to install and configure the PuppetDB. We'll do this in four different topics. First, we'll take a look at how to store configurations in the PuppetDB. In this case, by installing it. Next, we'll take a look at exporting resources such as files. In the next topic, we'll move on to how to utilize the default dashboard available with the PuppetDB. And lastly, in the final topic in this section, we'll take a look at the PuppetDB's APIs and getting data and instructions in and out of the PuppetDB. Well, in the beginning, the beginning of Puppet, that is, there is a ton of information that's passed from the agent to the master. This info was, and still is, kept on the master as flat files or as YAML files. The Puppet DB allows an alternative to these files being kept on the Puppet Master. The Puppet DB is used to hold all of this. Here, we'll install the Puppet DB from scratch on an existing and running Puppet topology. By the end of this topic, you'll know how to install the Puppet DB and how to connect to it. Let's start with prerequisites. Now obviously, you're going to need a working Puppet agent and server setup. You'll also need Factor, version 3 or newer, and Java 8 or better. Next, we're going to install the Puppet DB right from the source. So we're going to need to have Git too. After the installation, the Puppet DB needs to be configured, then of course started. Then we'll need to connect to the Puppet DB. Let's take a closer look at these steps in this video. Well, that's an awful lot of steps to do. Before we do that, let's do some pre steps. We have to make sure our Puppet Master is ready to have the Puppet DB installed on it. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over a few steps to ensure just that. So, right now I'm logged into the Puppet Master. The first thing that we need to see is to make sure that we have the correct version of Java installed and we have the right amount of memory to be allocated to the heap in Java to run the Puppet DB. So I'm going to go and look at the Puppet server file to look at the Java configuration. Now this file, or the contents of this file, is applied upon boot. So we can see the version of Java. Here we have version 7 or higher. We should probably have version 8. And also for Java args, it looks like we got 2 gigabytes of memory allocated towards a heap. We may want to change that to 3 if we get an error when we're trying to use the Puppet DB. But for right now, 2 should be okay. So we should have Java 7 or 8, and we should have at least 2 gigs of memory allocated towards a heap. So that looks good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at if the store configs are going to go to the Puppet DB. Now, to do that, we need to go into the Puppet Comp file, as you see here. And if you see the last three lines of configuration, we have store configs equal true, and then the store configs back end equal Puppet DB. Now, that's what we need to see, because right now, with these configurations in place, what will happen is when the agent communicates with the master, what's going to happen is rather than those metrics being stored as flat files, they will be stored in the Puppet DB if the Puppet DB is present. Now, the third pre step is we need to make sure the Puppet server is healthy and running. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the status of the Puppet server to make sure it's loaded, it's active, and we don't have any sort of warning or error messages. So, it looks like it's running and it's healthy. So these are the pre-steps that we need to perform. So at this point, what we need to do is go through the steps and install the Puppet DB. There we have it. You now have a working Puppet DB and you know how to connect to it. We'll ride this hand into the next topic, where we will take a closer look at Puppet resources and how they fit into with the Puppet DB.